Have you ever thought to yourself, my pup was kicking tail and taking names during our in-home snip work games. But when we got to our first trial, it's like he quit on me in a heartbeat. This is not such an uncommon challenge for dog handler teams. Too often while training our dogs to find odor, we present them with the search and within a few seconds, they find that easy hide and we reward them handsomely for being the most brilliant pups ever. Yet they go to trial and suddenly they actually have to work. And before you know it, they've quit on the search and you're left there hanging. If this sounds like a situation you'd like to avoid, then stay tuned because in today's episode, I'm going to show you how I instill tenacity in my dog so this common mistake does not rear its ugly head in the future. Let's get after it. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Dingle Days. I'm Dryad Dingle, the canine scent boss, and I'm fired up to share with you a few little techniques I use to ensure my dog is tenacious almost to a fault so that he does everything possible to find that Hi. While the type of techniques you apply with your dog to build that drive will vary from dog to dog, here are some ways that I have found helpful in our scent work nose work journey. But real quick, this channel is all about my journey with my German Shepherd dog, Disney. As we walk through the basics of canine scent work, pet photography, and the best pet technology to complement your productive lifestyle. If that sounds like something that interests you, consider subscribing. All right, first tip, focus on the odor, not the boxes. I know it sounds easier said than done, so let me explain. Take a series of containers, all empty, and a single interior hide placed on the wall away from these containers. Just setup is testing the dog's ability to work through assumptions. While there are those familiar containers around, the odor is somewhere else. The aim here is for your dog not to obsess over the containers, but rather find that odor. You can get the tools that I'm using here from Risa Hatcher, Nosework in a Box Creator, link in the description below. These are for elevated hides. There's a magnet on here and it allows for you to stick your scent somewhere just slightly out of reach for your dog so they're not always thinking about looking down but also looking up. We touched on that briefly when we did our podcast so feel free to tune into that if you want to learn a little bit more. But these just screw open like so and we can put our q-tip on the inside there. I'll just be taking a q-tip that's been chopped in half and one to two drops of the birch. Now normally you would allow this to cook for some time. Drop this inside of our container here. There's some holes inside of there that basically allow the scent to permeate through so when we stick it somewhere, it'll actually be able to adhere to the placement. Search. Yes, good. You found it. You found it, Disney. Good boy. Yes, good, you found it, good job. Over here. Next, I want you to build in some controlled stress with an obstacle. In this instance, use common objects around the house, such as a table or a chair, to create a blocked odor setup. There should be a reasonable path for the dog to access the odor, but it should require a little bit of decision making and avert the obvious. I know when I've reached my dog's threshold, so I customize the setup to make it just difficult enough to build tenacity and mental agility during the search. Search. Yes, good, you found it. You found it, Disney, good job. You found it. Another approach is to begin to proof the behavior with controlled distractions in the search area. Search. Yes, good, you found it. You found it, Disney, good job. You found it, good. Whenever you watch a professional working dog that has caught a whiff of the target odor, you will see them go nuts. And by that, I mean, a lot of times you'll see that keen focused attention in locating the source. Nothing will get in their way. And when trained, nothing will get them to come off the odor either. That's that obedience to odor until released by their handler, of course. It's marvelous to see when you reach that level. But at this level, let's start with the dog being able to stay focused on the search with a few people around, with a conversation going on in the background, with random rounds of applause, or even a toy in the area. If you want to get a complete rundown of how to set up an AKC scent work novice practice area, make sure you tap the screen and check out this video right here or check out another one from Dingle Days. Until next time, continue to get after it.